this video, we're going to be doing some interactive render sessions, and I'm going to show you a number of different ways that this can be achieved within RenderMan. The first is I'm going to introduce you to it, which is RenderMan's image tool. And then after that, we're going to have a look at the interactive rendering within Maya's viewport. So here I'm using this robot, which I've taken from ShipShape, which is one of Pixar's art challenges, which can be found on the renderman.pixar.com website. And I've gone ahead and I've brought him to life and I've UV'd him and he's laid out in about 25 different UDIMs. And from there, I've taken him into Mari where I've texted him using the Pixar Surface shader. Okay, so let's fire up an interactive render session. And this can be done very simply in RenderMan by coming up here to this IPR icon. If I right click on it, I get a number of options. I can stop it, I can flush the texture cache, I can render only selected objects. Here I can select which camera I want the IPR session to be running with and we'll, we'll have a play with this in a minute. And then this, this here is where I can change the resolution of my interactive render session. So I'm just going to go ahead and left click this and you'll see that what happens now is that the it window appears. And once the geometry and textures have been loaded into memory, the interactive session now starts to fire up. Okay, so now that the interactive render session is running, you can see now when I move around inside of Maya's viewport, I get a pretty responsive feedback. But there's one really useful way that I can speed this up. So if I come to the render settings here, and it, within the RenderMan tab and under sampling, I've got this option here called interactive refinement. So if I just change this from zero to two, now when I move around inside the viewport, you can see I get a much faster and more responsive feedback session. So now what I want to do is I want to just run you through these icons here along this top bar. And this first one here is to pan the picture around. This next one here allows me to zoom in and out. This next one here is a crop tool. So if I want to, say, refine a material that I'm working on, I can come to the crop tool and I can drag around a render region. So now I've drawn out this render region, there are one or two ways that I can get the buckets to sit within it. Now the first instance is I can just press R, and this may be a gotcha when you very first start using RenderMan. And the way to fix this is to come up to Image and you go Auto Crop Render. So now whenever I move my render region around, the buckets are confined within this box that I've drawn. So again I can come here and I can work on the wing and I can move my render region wherever I want it and then the buckets stay within and then for me to release the buckets again I can then press this close button and then the buckets will then work within the whole picture. This one here allows me to sequence through a number of pictures and we'll get to this in a minute. This one here allows me to select geometry within it so if I select the body you can see here that it's now selected within Maya and again with the arm and these wings and the feet. And this next one here allows me to do the same, but I can select materials. So if I just move the window over here a bit, if I select here, you can see now that what it's done here is it's selected the robot body. And here, if I select here, it's now selected the wing. And again, so it's a very easy and quick way for me to select a piece of geometry and then jump into its material. So the next option here is to reset the viewport. And again, if I just so if I've zoomed out, I can then go back to my one and one. If I then press Control and F, it will then resize and reframe the window so that everything becomes neat again. These next three icons allow me to do comparisons within renders, but it also allows me to load in a background as well. So the first thing I need to do is load in a picture. So if I come to File and I go Open File, and I load in this picture here, which is my backplate for my robot, so now I've loaded in this picture, what I can do is I can define this as my background plate by simply clicking on this icon here to toggle it as the background. And when I jump back to my interactive session, you can now see that my robot is now being rendered over my backplate. Now the camera is wrong, so as I promised you earlier, we're going to swap the camera. So if I come back up here and I right click and I define this camera which has been provided to us by HDR sets and this is Industrial Hall 01. So if I now select this, what it will do is it will fire up a new interactive session from this camera viewport. 
So now it is firing up. I've got my back plate here and I've got my robot. And then what I can do is I can come up to my ground plane that I've already pre-made with a holdout mat. And if I unhide it, you can now see that it's casting and catching the shadows as well. And I can scrub through my animation within the timeline and it is constantly keeping up with me. These next set of buttons here allow me to load in an image sequence into it, which I'm going to get to in the next part. Uh, this is your loop, this is the number of frames in and out, and this is your frame rate. And then here we have a couple of gamma and exposure controls. So I can adjust my picture within the viewport, and then I can press this button to reset it. So down here you can see I've got my channels, and then here you can see that my color workspace is running within ACES CG. Then here I've got my X and Y of my pixels, and then here I've got my color values as well where the cursor is. So as you can see, as we've been working through this lesson, this catalog window has been getting more and more images within it. This is our first IPR session that we had, and then we loaded in our backplate, and then this is when we swapped out the camera. And then if I open it up, you can then see that within that, you can also see the AOVs that we've been generating. So the really nice feature of this is that as you keep working through your scene and look dev sessions, it will keep storing all the pictures as you go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly run you through these menus. So here is where we can open files, we can read in sequences, we can export files from our IT sessions, and we can save our whole catalogs as well. So we can save a session, we can export all our pictures. This here allows us to export all our renders. This next set of options allows me to um, step through my pictures. So this next option here, burn in mapping on save, is important because by default, render man renders within a linear color space. And you can see here that we've got our ACES CG transform. So if this wasn't turned on and I exported this image out from it, it wouldn't have the ACES CG transform applied to it. So you always need to make sure that this is on for your images to look the same on export as they do within it. So this next set of options here within image allows me to render again. It allows me to set that auto crop render, which we had a look at before. I can cancel it, copy, and here I, I can toggle the background on and off. So here I've got my view option, so I can resize the window, I can zoom in and out. So this denoise option here, something that we're going to get to in a later lesson, but effectively what it does is it allows you to denoise your interactive render sessions as you work. Here I can turn off these blue buckets, so if I just give it a quick refresh, you can see that the blue buckets appear. And then if I then come back to here, I can then turn them off. I can look at my frame rates here and within there, I can then also move them so I can have them either top left or bottom right. Turn those off again. Here I can see my pixel aspect ratio. I can jump to my channels. I can then jump into the tools, which are the same icons here as in the shelf. I can step through my sequences. This is my monitor adjustment, so I can gamma up and down and I can expose up and down. This here is my color input space, and as you can see, I've got rather a lot loaded in. And here I've got my display view, which is set to sRGB. So here you can see that I can set my burning notes where I want them and, and my font size. I can come here and I can generate a Macbeth chart, which again puts into my IT session. So these next two options allow me to create a snapshot from my IT window and then save it into my catalog. So here I can save a snapshot and it'll save it with the AOVs. And then my next option here is I can also do a snapshot where it's just the AOVs. And it's actually a perfect way for you to create a bunch of pictures from your IT sessions and then share them with others. This next set of features here allows me to do a bunch of analysis on my render. And again, we'll come to this in a later lesson. And then window here, I can toggle my catalog on and off. So this next option here shows me my inspector, which allows me to see a bunch of information for each of my renders that I've created. Turn that off. And then here I can toggle my image tools, my pixel readout, my sequence and monitor controls. Here I've got a Python console and I've got my message log. And then here I've got my preferences. I can set what color I want the bucket indicators to be. 
And then here I've set up my display mappings. So now I've run you through all the basic functionality within it. I'm now going to show you how you can get a render session going within the Maya viewport.